Okay, I really don't give a damn how lukewarm I was to the previous two installments, but this is a brand new Wizarding World film, Fantastic Beasts film, uh, Harry Potter prequel, whatever you want to call it now. I don't really know if it's a Fantastic Beasts movie so much anymore, but regardless, I was walking into this movie hyped. Fantastic Beasts of the Secrets of Dumbledore is like the bajillionth movie in this franchise, once again directed by David Yates, and it stars Albus Dumbledore himself, Jude Law, and he's basically on the hunt for Gellert Grindelwald. This time, curiously, not played by Johnny Depp, instead played by the great Mads Mikkelsen, and Grindelwald, of course, is moving to seize control of the wizarding world. Dumbledore is unable to stop him alone, so he entrusts magizoologist Newt Scamander, once again played by Eddie Redmayne, to lead an intrepid team of wizards and witches. An army of some sort. That's not the only inside baseball term you're going to get today. They soon encounter an array of old and new beasts as they clash with Grindelwald's growing legion of followers. Okay guys, this may be the hottest take that you will see about this movie all throughout this media here. But leaving Secrets of Dumbledore, I was pretty satisfied. I'm not going to lie. I really found myself enjoying a lot of what this film had to offer. Certainly a superior entry to Crimes of Grindelwald, which I know a lot of people hated. But for what it's worth, definitely an improvement over its predecessor. And I can honestly sit here proudly today and argue that this is the best Fantastic Beasts installment we've gotten yet. And a lot of that is due to the technical prowess that it retained from the previous two films. James Newton Howard's score is once again absolutely brilliant. This theme he composes for the opening credits is absolutely pulsating. And the fact that you do have some of John Williams' old tunes as you're walking through the Great Hall at Hogwarts itself... <sighs> cleanses my soul as a Potterhead. And I also gotta mention that this direction is top-notch from David Yates. Once again, he is the only one that I feel like really understands the wizarding world from a director's standpoint at this time. Because like I said, he's done like a bajillion of these movies at this point. And of course, by that I actually mean like just seven. Maybe eight, I don't know. But this is just wonderful shot composition and even better magical CGI. These wizarding duels are f***ing awesome in Secrets of Dumbledore. Now, they are few and far between. There's a lot of really interesting character development that's going on that I would like to touch on briefly. But for what it's worth, David Yates once again captures magical war excellently. All of these returning actors are once again fantastic. You have Eddie Redmayne once again being the lovable doofus as Newt Scamander. His brother Theseus is played by Callum Turner who gets a lot of interesting character work to sink his teeth into this time. Dan Fogler as freaking Jacob Kowalski, man. I mean, I didn't, th I thought this character was gonna be annoying when I first saw him in 2016, but goddamn, his character arcs just make you want to tear up and hug this guy. His relationship with Queenie as Spoiler alert, you might be already aware, but Queenie defects to the dark side and falls under Grindelwald's spell at the end of the previous film. So it's actually kind of interesting to see that dynamic as Queenie is on the evil side of the line here and Jacob is still kind of on the outside looking in. Because obviously he's a muggle and uh, Grindelwald does not really enjoy having muggles around to say the very least. So that puts an even heftier layer on this relationship than it already had and I really, really dug that plot line. Well, not to mention Kowalski finally is presented a wand from Dumbledore himself and... Uh, Leads to some hilarity. You might remember seeing a dinner scene in the trailer, and it's just as funny in full form. I mentioned Dumbledore himself, so I might as well talk about him for a bit. Jude Law, I think, might be one of the best casting choices I've ever seen in my whole entire life here. Just the opening scene by itself that he shares with Grindelwald in the restaurant, and the backstory that's revealed about Dumbledore and the tragedy of his past, his romance that he shared with Grindelwald, they were gonna go run away together. 
It was unbelievable. It was stuff I wanted in a Harry Potter film for the longest time because Dumbledore was always a character I was so fascinated with, but yet he always kept sort of a low profile, especially around Harry Potter himself. But now he's kind of at the forefront of this narrative, and as you get more exposition dump sequences where he basically talks about his past, not to say that this is a bad thing, these exposition dumps, sometimes they can be really, really integral. And it just made me want to root for this character even more than I already did. I love Jude Law in this role, but that really does bring me to one of the big issues with this film. It doesn't really feel like a Fantastic Beasts movie anymore. Granted, yes, you do get some of the cute creatures, and there's a whole opening sequence where you have these really, really adorable little guys called Chillins. Keep an eye on the Chillins, because, uh, they're going to be pretty integral to the end of this film. But I adored these little guys. I mean, again, this is one of the things that I hate and love about the Wizarding World all at once. I want these creatures to be my pets running around the house. But yet they're not real, and I really want them to be real. But yeah, in fact, that is one of the big downfalls of Secrets of Dumbledore itself. It does not really feel like a Fantastic Beasts movie anymore. It definitely does feel like it's more of an inside baseball Harry Potter style film. At this point, I'm sitting here pondering whether or not it should even have the Fantastic Beasts name attached to it. I know I'm a stickler for details, and I'm being really, really vague about this, but again, my MO is no spoilers, so I'm going to respect that for you guys, especially for all of my fellow Harry Potter fans who I'm sure are going to watch this movie anyway. But let me just say that number one, the movie is a tad bit too long at 220. Too. I think they could have trimmed off at least about 10 minutes worth of like speeches thrown in there and there's a couple of little unnecessary scenes. The second act can meander a tad bit but other than that guys I really was never bored watching Secrets of Dumbledore. I actually found myself laughing at a lot of scenes too. I definitely feel like the ending of this film is very one note. And I think there was a huge missed opportunity here. A lot of my favorite Harry Potter films had that bittersweet tone to it. Half-Blood Prince, after Dumbledore ironically dies on the Astronomy Tower. Harry, Ron, and Hermione all agree to go search for these Horcruxes together. My point being, the main franchise had bittersweet endings, but it kind of made you want to tune into what's next. The Fantastic Beasts films still definitely make me want to see what's coming next. But I think this film was missing a tad bit more emotionally. And there was something that I really, really wanted them to do with Credence, who I have said is the most boring part of these films, and I don't know if that has anything to do with Ezra Miller's performance or not, but they are really, really trying their damnedest to make me care about Credence, and... <sighs> I still don't. I'm sorry. I don't. And even more so, they're trying to make him their Professor Snape. Look at the press imagery. He has the Snape hair now. I'm digressing a little bit. There is a battle sequence that he shares with Professor Dumbledore himself that was really, really cool. And I don't want to say there's a retcon here and there, but there was something in Crimes of Grindelwald that really pissed off a lot of the hardcore fans like myself. And they sort of pull a Rise of Skywalker with it. I'm t Again, I'm trying to be as vague as possible. I'm trying not to spoil it. But I personally think what the script does to placate those hardcore fans and their issue with the end of Crimes of Grindelwald, I think it is definitely satisfactory for the most part. Speaking of Grindelwald, okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Ah... <sighs> This, this could take me days. As you all know, I am a humongous fan of Johnny Depp. I absolutely love most of what he's done in the past, except when he's playing Willy Wonka. Point being, he is a very, very skilled actor, for sure. And seeing him play a villain in the past two Wizarding World films, he was just so brooding and slimy and just bastardly. And I loved what he was doing with Grindelwald. So when the studio decided to axe him from the franchise and replace him with a gifted actor in Mads Mikkelsen, which, don't think this is a knock on Mads at all, because I think he is good as Grindelwald in this film. But after sitting here thinking about it for a minute, and after having sat through pretty much two hours and 20 minutes of my life and seeing a very different iteration of Grindelwald... I don't know if I liked what they were going for with Mads Mikkelsen. I think I much preferred the presentation of Johnny Depp, the eccentric style villain. You still have that cult leader mentality with Mads Mikkelsen, but you didn't have the intimidation factor, really. I was never really scared of Mads Mikkelsen as Grindelwald. 
Johnny Depp, on the other hand, could instill that fear in you. Don't get me wrong, Mads can still command the frame when he needs to. Like I said, he is good in this film. It's not a knock on Mads Mikkelsen as an actor at all. This was a Johnny Depp role, though, in every way, and I am still sitting here extremely bitter that the studio made the decision that they did. Bottom line, I know a lot of people are indifferent towards the Fantastic Beasts movies at this point. A lot of people don't exactly know where these are heading, let the Potterhead and me educate you for a moment, because I know exactly where this series is heading. Pop quiz question number one. Look back at Crimes of Grindelwald and look back on this film. Hell, just look at press images. What wand is Gellert Grindelwald using? Now, if you said the Elder Wand, aka one-third of the Deathly Hallows, you would be absolutely correct. Pop quiz question number two. Who in the main franchise carries the Elder Wand while Harry Potter is in his studies? Well, that would be Albus Dumbledore himself. And quiz question number three, how in the blue hell does Albus Dumbledore get the Elder Wand in his possession? A duel against his blood-packed person, so to speak, Gellert Grindelwald. There is a massive duel that takes place. It's dubs the big wizarding duel of 1944 between Dumbledore and Grindelwald. And that's how Dumbledore gets it. And then Grindelwald ends up in Azkaban. Spoiler alert for Fantastic Beasts 5. I think Secrets of Dumbledore makes us excited for what's eventually to come. The big, gigantic duel there. It certainly just gives you a small taste of what you can expect in that big battle without blowing its load too much. Now, I for one actually can sit here and say that I think four movies for Fantastic Beasts is more than enough. Because with the way this movie wrapped up, despite the missed opportunity... I think you can knock this out with just one more film. Because then if you just add that extra one in between what we're actually building up towards... It's gonna feel like filler. So that's just a heads up for all of my fellow Potterheads. Bottom line, if you're a big fan of the franchise like me, you're probably gonna see this movie anyway. But I, for one, firmly believe that Secrets of Dumbledore is a very enjoyable film. The best one in the prequels up to this point, easily. I'm gonna give it a B+. I realize that grade is gonna be insanely high once again for most people. But again, if you're a Potterhead like me you're going to see this movie regardless of what I think. Let me know what you guys thought of Secrets of Dumbledore down in the comments section below. What house do you guys belong to? Do you guys have any other inside baseball knowledge about Harry Potter that we can all share with each other? Because I love discussing all things geeky, all things Harry Potter, all things movies and entertainment in general. If this is your first time visiting the channel today and you want to continue discussing these topics with me, why don't you go ahead and smash that subscribe button along with that notification bell right next to it. That way you lovely people can always stay in the loop. Don't forget guys, also smash that like button as hard as you possibly can on your way out. That would be tremendously helpful. And stay tuned for more exciting content hitting this channel very, very soon. Next weekend is stacked with the Northmen and the unbearable weight of massive talent, just to name a couple of things that I'm going to be reviewing. And I cannot wait to reveal what my retro movie series is coming out very, very soon in the build-up to a huge blockbuster this summer. But guys, y'all are the best. Thank you all so, so very much again for your continued support. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.